Okay, removing drive shaft bolts. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is on the back side, well, probably in the front, however you can get at them, spray penetrating spray. Um, I did that over a couple of days. Um, I actually couldn't get these loose when I tried it. But then uh, another thing you can do, this piece back here, you can heat that up, like right here. And then I usually heat it and let it cool, and that usually cracks stuff loose. Um, but you can also heat it up just this back part, heat up that back part, and then uh, try and crack these loose. That'll help. Um, but basically what you want to do is get a 12-point wrench that you don't really care about. Uh, this happens to be a 12 millimeter. And the, the reason I say get a wrench that you're not, you don't really care about or is cheap to replace is that you're going to hit this with uh, one of the hammers in your selection of big heavy hammers. Uh, you're going to want to put the vehicle in park, you know, if it actually has a drive shaft and you know, isn't a trailer, but uh, put it in park, put the parking brake on because um, you don't want it to move. You want to limit that as much as possible. Another thing is um, I'm going to remove this one so I'm going to bring it down so I take up all that slack and bring it down because if you're hitting it like this part of your energy is going to actually turning this until it gets somewhere where you're applying torque to that nut or to the bolt sorry that is a 12 point wrench fits right on there and then you just take a hammer and then crack that real hard but I'm not left-handed, so I can't run the camera with my right hand and swing with my left and be underneath here. So um, I just wanted to give you a couple of quick tips on how to remove those. But now I'll see if I can get it out. All right, got a little more done. Uh, I just put reflectors up here. I didn't really care to run running lights because it's it's so close to the truck. Um, if it was a longer trailer, I would. Um, what I've got is there it is on the ground over here really well prepared aren't I um, I got a Y harness it was about 15 bucks uh, 20 foot long wires which was plenty long for this and what I did was I just took them out untangled them and I took them in through the window of the truck and I took my meter to them to make sure I was getting it right and um, I used the brake and the blinkers and everything. Yellow is the left blinker or stop. Um, the brown one is a running light. And then the green is the right side brake or turn. And the brown with that is also a running light. Uh, the white one up here is just your chassis ground, so that just gets screwed to the trailer. Now this thing around my neck that I'm carrying around, um, it's just a spiral wrapping. A lot of people will just electric tape their wires and I kind of advised against that because if something goes wrong you got to take off yards and yards of tape to fix it uh, with this you just unwrap it and then you wrap it back on and then there you go um, and that is how you do it you just spin it around the wire like that like a well, if you pull it apart and then you just start wrapping it, it you just kind of wind it around like that but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, you want to leave yourself enough slack. I usually say as much slack as the chains have is how much slack you want in your wiring. Uh, just because you might pull it with a different vehicle or uh, when you turn you want enough wire so you don't pull the plug apart. Now uh, the biggest concern with running wires on trailers, especially home built ones, uh, you want to keep the wires from rubbing up and down or side to side on frame members. like. If I go through here and go through this hole, I'd want to put a rubber bushing in that hole or um, run it through this spiral wrap stuff, um, something like that. Uh, and like if I, were, if I were to lay them on top of this, I'd want to protect them. Um, you can use PVC pipe. Um, I mean, that's not great because it can still wiggle around in that, but it's better than nothing. Uh, you can tape wires in select areas. Uh, zip ties to secure them. Just whatever you can do to keep them from rubbing and wearing out, uh, especially in old, jagged, rusty metal. So I'm just going to try and plan my attack here. Um, I don't think I'm going to split it down both sides. I'm probably going to go all the way straight back with 
both sets of wires on one side and then split one off over this way which I can do because I've got enough wire to do it. Um, if you have a long trailer, you're gonna have to split it down each side. Um, like if you have a very wide trailer anyway. So um, before you start cutting, run the wires to where you think you want them to go. Make sure it'll all fit. And I'm gonna use this on the hitch side to keep it all ni nice, tight, and bundled together. So I'll show you that when I'm done. Okay, what I did was I just cut the uh, factory wiring off as you can see there the bulb is incredibly hot um, anyway that factory wiring I just cut off um, these are just temporary till I can get an actual automotive style crimp connector on there but uh, just grounded it with the screw right there and um, yeah I just didn't want to mess around with trying to connect to the factory wiring underneath so I just did this and uh, I'll go ahead and just slap it all back together. I know both sides work. Um, tail in turn work, so uh, yeah. Just tap the brakes, make sure that works, and we're good to go. Just slap the tail lights back in. All right, one more quick note. The license plate lights, uh, I just spliced into the running light. Um, it doesn't matter which side, either one, but I just spliced that into there and then grounded it to the chassis. So all the lights work, they're back in. That's pretty much project accomplished for this. Um, so I think it's something else to do. Uh, last thing, um, before I call this trailer done, uh, I do need to take it on a road test, but as you can see, I've got that spiral wrap stuff protecting it. Um, I just ran it through here, just, uh, just a nicer transition. I don't know. I'll probably take that zip tie off, because I did have it zip tied to here, then I decided I'll just put it through here so it can slide back and forth. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure about this yet, but I do like having this on here so I don't lose the safety pin. But yeah, that's uh, project complete, um, unless I decide to lower it, but um, I'll update my Corey's Rides Facebook if I decide to take the four-wheel drive blocks out of it or flip the axle or anything like that.